Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell, creator of Whole Artist Mastery. I help artists like you discover and develop your true authentic voice and understand how that informs your particular use of visual language. What the Whole Artist Mastery channel is about is supporting you on your whole artist journey. We talk about the philosophy behind Whole Artist Mastery, how it's a deeper way of understanding yourself as an artist, and the tools and techniques and approach to using visual language as that relates to your particular voice. And we have discussions about how all of that informs your particular orientation in the world as an artist. So what we're going to talk about today is how to push the use of your materials beyond what you think you can actually use. And in other words, materials and different mediums are expensive. And so I'm going to be using oil pastels and showing you how to use little tiny bits of them, clean them off, to continue to make beautiful work with your oil pastels. We are looking down here at my box of old oil pastels, whole body oil pastels. And you can see that, um, well, they're actually pretty messy and pretty dirty. I have a paper towel here that I'm going to scrape the messy stuff off the edges on. And I have my um, paper here, which again is Reeves BFK pa printmaking paper. And I have found that the cream color is more effective at holding the oil pastel than the white because I guess maybe the white fibers are um, tighter from the bleaching process and the weight of the paper is 280 gram. So I'm going to pull my piece of paper towel here and let's take this lovely shade of pink that you can hardly tell it is actually pink. You take your razor blade in one of these metal razor scraper holders and you scrape off the dirty edges like this. Make sure you get the, the um, ridges and um, all sides of the piece of pastel and the, um, the edges. So, and sometimes you can use these crumbs in the making of your oil pastel, which I will show you. Um, I'm going to do just another one to show you. Here's a red one. And sometimes I do this ahead of time, but the way I work is very spontaneous and direct. So I typically just dive right in and look for ones that are less covered with messy stuff and um, then clean them as I go. And doing this allows me to use these a lot longer than you would think. And the other thing I want to show you is how small a piece you can actually take for a long way. It will actually, you can make a lot, you can cover a lot of the surface of the paper with just a small piece. And I will show you that. So let's start with the red here. And you can probably see that there's, yep, there's a, there's a dark piece here. But as a matter of fact, that then becomes part of the oil pastel, the piece that I'm making. Um, and so I cover the whole page here, and then I'm going to show you how this little tiny piece can go a long way here and cover quite a lot of territory. Now, I've worked it down to this tiny little piece, which in fact can be very useful when you're working on a very small area. So I have a purple here that has very little extra stuff on it that I'm coming in with. And I wanna cover the whole page, the whole piece of paper. And let's bring some dark in here. And coming with this 
little piece of white, which sometimes when they are as small as this, they're actually more effective because they've been worked and they're more malleable. And so now I have this lovely mess here. And I'm going to take my Bondo spreader, which is used for making or for uh, repairing auto body. For auto body repairs, um, covering the dents, they mix up their goop and they spread this across the car with their dents to fix the dents. And it's a great way to move the oil pastel around like this. And I can push this and now I have this little piece here that I can push in there. And just kind of move this around. And then I told you that you can use some of these pieces that you've scraped off and put them in your your oil pastel. I also want to tell you that uh, the kind of tape that I'm using is gaff tape and it is a heavy almost sort of like canvas-like tape, and it, it uh, does not ruin the paper, and it's very um, strong. When we're finished looking at all of this, you'll see in the links below the video, links to the paper, to the Holbein oil pastels, and to the tape. And incidentally, if you're really sticker shocked by the oil, the Holbein oil pastels, I have found that the best, less expensive oil pastel to do this kind of thing is the Sakura Expressionist oil pastel brand. They are about half the price the colors are not quite as nuanced and rich, but the, the way the oil pastel works together is very similar. You can get some nice creamy passages with it. So this is, this is you know, quite a muddy mess here. <laughs> but the point of this was to show you how you can use your old pieces as opposed to showing you how to make a masterpiece. You can talk about complex color and the importance of complex color. What I have going here now is a lot of what I would call complex color, AKA muddy color or dirty color, color that is less clear and strong and, and bright and intense, which actually is an important element in making the colors sing together. When you have muddy color paired with clear, intense color, then you start to get this dynamic play and what I call color depth, where the muddy color is um, holding the brilliance of the uh, bright color and the bright color is being held by the muddy color. Now, before I start doing that, I just want to draw your attention to this little piece of all these little crumbs of red that I'm going to put back in a piece here. And that can be a really cool way of creating texture. So I'm going to come back in here with the red and maybe I'll bring in some orange and I want the orange to be nice and clear. So I'm going to scrape off the edge here. This is a bigger piece than many of the little tiny pieces I have. And bring this in. And by doing this over the years for myself, it's been a great medium and process to help me understand what my voice is trying to say, what my work is all about. And 
answer to that question for me is that I'm very interested in bringing polar opposites together. So whether that's very, very dark and very, very light or organic forms and architectural forms or opposite colors. So in this particular piece, what's shaping up is an opposite color relationship. So I've got this dark, dark blue down here and this orangey red up here. Now this blue is kind of like a, it's an indigo blue, which has a little bit of green in it. It's not a purpley blue. It's more of a green blue, even though you don't really see green. But that is helping to hold the reddish orange. So it's not entirely just blue. Um, blue is opposite orange, but green is opposite red. So it's pairing nicely with this red orange up here. And I tend to you know, want to divide things so that you really see the dichotomy between the two. And I pulled away, there's some purple here, and I'm gonna come back in with orange, and I'm wiping off the edge here with my paper towel, and cover that over. And this little bit of red crumbs that I put in there, I'm leaving that there, because I like that. Um, and that was something that was completely unplanned. And so now we have still a lot of complex or what you might call dirty color, but this is reading as the solid clear color now. And that's being held by the more complex color up here. One of the things that's crucial in understanding if a piece is finished is taking your tape off. So I'm gonna show you how to take the tape off. I'll show you from over here. You take the corner, the inside corner, and you pull it from the inside at a 45 degree angle, like this, slowly, so that you're not gonna rip into your, your image that you've created, your pastel piece. And like this. that away and finally this one going up like this and there you go looks a lot more finished without the tape would you agree so let's go over now that this is finished and the tape is off how this particular piece to me reveals what my work is about what is inspiring to me, what's the source of my artistic vision and, and voice. What you see here is this division between the um, very dark blue and which is a solid flat color and the um, myriad of oranges and reds and other colors which create a more complex color field than the flat blue here. So right there is a juxtaposition of opposing uh, elements. This is a color that's the, uh, this orangey red is opposite this green blue, and, or blue green, it's, it's blue, but there's a little bit of green in it. So that speaks to the orange with a little bit of red in it because red is opposite green and orange is opposite blue. So those are two opposing elements that are coming together to create harmony together. Also, the shape here is reminiscent of a lot of shapes that seem to continually recur in my work. And so that's something for you to pay attention to in looking at your work is, are there certain shapes that continue to show up in all of your work? Are there certain color combinations? Like for me, orange and red is a very common color combination that shows up in my work, despite my sometimes trying to keep it out of my work. Um, and so by using these oil pastels in this abstract, you know, reckless abandon way, and then starting to create a composition once you've put a lot of colors down, 
it does help you see what comes out in terms of the kinds of shapes you use, the kinds of colors you're attracted to, whether you use lines, what kind of lines that you do. Like this is a very typical line for me. And whether you have high contrast or low contrast in color and what kind of texture. Some people really want their work to be totally smooth. I enjoy having the texture here because for me, part of what my work is about is showing the layers of different um, levels of transparent and opaque color and texture, which to me signifies the layers of who we are as human beings. I also tend to, and I invite you to go take a look at my work at MarianneMitchell.com, much of my work has a focal point in the center. It's really hard for me to explain why that is um, because it seems to show up on a regular basis. I think it has to do with the fact that I'm searching for an anchor of hope in my work that I can offer that to those who see it. And so I also find it an interesting challenge to have a central focal point be um, in play with everything else around it so that your eye doesn't get just stuck right here. And I think that this piece is effective at doing that because there are these other lines up here that draw your eye away from this focal point. The strength of this dark blue keeps you from staying right here. And there's this tiny little bit of white, actually it's light pink, which was completely unplanned, but it makes this work. It makes it so that there's more light in here. And it actually feels like there's this little tiny sliver of light, which invites you to have hope. So let's recap what we talked about here. I wanted to show you my box of messy oil pastels and how you can reuse and repurpose older materials so that you don't have to continually go out and buy more expensive art supplies and how the choices that you make here can reveal something about your authentic artistic voice as you're making your work. So I hope this was helpful. If you found it interesting, please subscribe to the Whole Artist YouTube channel and like this video. And then head on over to my website where you'll see online courses available. There are some interesting things about the Whole Artist Mastery philosophy, which is about owning your authentic voice, making compelling work because of your voice, and knowing how you want to show up in the world as an artist because in this very fractured world, we can contribute that whole energy. So thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.